Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew and welcome back to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial video. So for this tutorial video, I wanted to show you guys the rulers. So Clip Studio Paint has a variety of rulers that you can use to get some straight lines in your drawings if you wish. Um, so the rulers are actually found here. By default, you should see on the left hand side here, the fourth icon from the bottom is a, a little dash line here if uh, you click that uh, icon you can come over here to the sub tools and you'll have the direct lines I've made a video about that um, frames I made a video about that and now rulers um, and then there's these other uh, striation lines and these uh, speed lines but we'll cover that later so the rulers uh, you have a variety of rulers here. You have a linear ruler, a curve ruler, figure ruler, a uh, ruler pin, a special ruler, a guide and perspective ruler, and a symmetrical ruler. Uh, we'll go over the perspective ruler uh, some other time because it's. I'll make a video about perspective uh, tool later. So if you click the linear tool, that's exactly how it says. It's just a straight line. You pretty much click where you want to start and then drag it to however long you want it. And so you'll see this purple line here. And if you look at your layer, you'll see that you have this little blue triangle here. It's like a, um, a ruler, a straight edge. And so that indicates that that layer has a ruler on that layer. Um, so if you click this other icon here, it looks exactly the same as a ruler. If you click that, you'll see these uh, other varieties here. Currently, the, the one that's selected is says, uh, show only when editing target. That means that this ruler here will only appear on this layer. I'll create a new layer, and you'll see that the ruler disappears. I'll grab a pen, and you can see that I can draw however I want. But if I go back to the layer where there's the ruler and I have my pin tool selected, you'll see that my pin will stay on that line. Now, it will only go as far as the ruler's length. Now, you can still create other lines, but as long as you stay close to this ruler here, you can see I started down here right below the ruler and it's still making the line. So as long as you get close to it, it'll catch it. Now if you want to get really, really close, you can zoom in and you can draw a line as close as possible. But if you're kind of zoomed out, the program Clip Studio will kind of latch on to that ruler. You're going to have to play with it, get comfortable, um, you know, play with it, like I said, to, to get a feel for it. Of course, remember, you always have the undo button, so if you do something you, you didn't want, you can always undo. Uh, so that's the ruler. Now, there's other things um, you can do also. If you go back to the uh, your ruler selections here on the where the layers are, the uh, show in the same folder and also shows in all layers. If you select the shows show in all layers, now any layer you create, the ruler will always be there. So I'll create several uh, layers here. So you'll see I have these three raster layers right above the layer with the ruler, but you can still see the ruler and the ruler will apply. Let me choose a different color for that layer. So you can have, um, you can use the ruler on multiple layers and it will still apply. I'll erase the blue one and you can see the red ones there. Now I'll erase the red one, the black ones there. So uh, the others, uh, again, going back to the layer with the ruler, if you go back to the selection here, the one that says show in the same folder now, if you create a folder, by this icon here where it says new folder, and if you put the uh, layer with the ruler in that folder, now only layers that are in that folder will show 
the ruler. For instance, this layer here is not the one with the ruler, but it's in the same folder with the layer with the ruler. And you can use uh, the ruler on that layer. But if you go outside the folder, if this layer that's outside the folder, you'll see that the ruler disappears. Right? The ruler is no longer there. But inside the folder, you have the ruler. Now, uh, you can. Let me d take that folder, get rid of that folder. So I took the layer out of the folder. So if you um, put a ruler down and let's say you want to uh, remove it, you no longer need it, you can go back here and uncheck it. Now you'll see a red X over the, um, the ruler. So now you're not using the ruler anymore. Um, if you click it, it'll show back up again. Now, if for sure you know that you're done with it, you never want to use it again, make sure uh, you are selected. If you go back to the layer, make sure you select it and you can go to the little trash can and it'll tell you that you're about to delete the ruler. Hit OK and it will delete the ruler without deleting your layer. Let me draw something. So you'll have, uh, let's say you draw something with the ruler. You no longer need the ruler. Just hit the little trash can, and the ruler is gone, but your straight line is still there. Now, you might ask yourself, because I, I just did a video where I went over the, um, the line, and you might ask yourself, well, what's the difference between a ruler and a line? I could use the straight line and get a straight line, just like a ruler. Well, what the ruler allows you to do is that um, you can use your pin and now you can use um, line weight so say you want thin and then thick or thin and thick again uh, and then we turn off the turn off the ruler now you can see that unlike the the straight line using the straight line tool with the ruler you can use your pin and you can change the line width if you, if that's what the look you want that's what uh, the um, the ruler tool will let you do. So now I'm, I'm going to delete that ruler. Oops, not the, the trash can. All right. Now there are other things you can do with the um, the uh, linear ruler. You can, if you come over here to the uh, tool properties, you can do a scale. And this allows you to select uh, a unit. You can do pixels, you can do centimeters, millimeters, inches, points, Q, or you can do uh, equ uh, equal divisions, and you can do a golden ratio. Uh, obviously, well, I'll show you with uh, the inches. You can see here, I'll do a straight line. You can also hold down the shift button, and that'll... Uh, make your lines go uh, in in degrees of 45 0 45 and 90 um, so you can do that hold, by holding down the shift button and once you let go you can see now I can have I have one inch two inch three inches uh, you can change it back to centimeters and now I can do centimeters there's my centimeters and then I can do millimeters, which should be the same except in the hundreds, so or in the tenth. So here's one and ten. Um, one centimeter is equal to ten millimeters, and so you know that it's accurate. So it it's, it becomes like a ruler. So you have measurements. Uh, the equal division. This is uh, you, very useful when you want to. Um, let's say you you have this line here and you want to divide it equally well instead of measuring it you can do the um, equal division and just put it to the length of your line and then you can see here it'll divide it equally for you it'll tell you uh, let me get the red it started here and you have a point here you have a point here a point here and of course that's where it ended and so it divided my line equally 
Um, now, while the ruler's still on, you can't draw uh, up or down. So just turn off the ruler, and now you can draw up and down. So there, it divided the line equally for you. Uh, so that's very useful also. Let me delete those rulers. Oh, and by the way, you can only use one ruler at a time. So if I have a, a ruler here and then I have one here, I don't think that you can... Oh, I, I stand corrected. You can use them both. So you can use multiple rulers on one layer. Uh, what else can we do with the the linear? Oh, um, let me turn off the scale. Um, you can also do these uh, straight line, uh, quadratic, and then a cubic. So the quadratic, uh, let me draw some points here real quick. Let me draw here. Well, this is one, two, and three. So with this line here, if you choose the uh, quadratic, what you the way you use that is you go from one point, hold the pin down, and go to point two, and then it allows you to um, lift it so you can put a curve to it. So basically, you're choosing a third point. Um, you can kind of see that the cursor doesn't really match the line, but you can see the line. So click it wherever you want it. Now you can uh, take your pin and draw a nice curve. And again, it only goes as far as the line is, so uh, you won't go past that. Uh, the quadratic um, is the quadratic is four points. So you do the um, the first point, oh, first point, and then a second point. But then you can do a third point and a fourth point. And what you'll get is this nice uh, curve like this, like a sine wave. So let's demonstrate that. So I'm going to go from 1 to 2. And now I can go here. And then I can go here. And that's it. You can only do four points. So now you can do this nice little curve uh, if that's what you want. Um, and again, uh, if you're going to use a line tool or a ruler, uh, not a line tool, sorry, um, what I would do, what I would suggest is put it on this all layers. That way you can, um, you can, if you want, you can draw reference points, you know, to create the line and then go to a different layer to, to actually draw the line. And that way you can, um, make your reference invisible and then you can still keep the line you created well I'll let you guys figure that out you guys uh, can use the tools any ways you want so um, and that's it for the line tool there's a curve tool so the curve tool is basically the same thing um, you have um, except you have straight line the the spline which is just a curved line the quadratic and the cube just like the before uh, so and so I'll just demonstrate it right here why won't it let me oh it's invisible that's why so I'll just click one here and I'm not dragging the line I'm just picking points on my uh, Wacom tape uh, tablet or Cintiq so I'll pick multiple points here and if you get close to where you started, you'll see a little circle on your cursor. That means it'll close it off. Or if you check this box here where it says close line, you can come to the very last point and just double click and it'll close it off for you. And now you can uh, draw a perfect square or I mean whatever uh, shape you created there. And you can also do it as a as a curve. See, it starts curving now. I can pick multiple points. And if I double click, it'll close it off for me. Or again, I can just do 
if I don't have that box checked when I double click it just makes the the curve line that I wanted and again this is the um, the quadratic which is a uh, you pick three three points and so you take it to wherever you want make maybe another one double click and it it'll um, it'll end the line and then this one whoops okay so this last one the cubic you click and hold it and then you take the point wherever you want let go and you can click another point here let it go click another point let it go you can keep clicking these points to where you want them and then of course double click and you're done and that's the uh, cubic and again if you wanted to close it all off you can select that button there that box and it will close it off for you the next one is the figure ruler the figure ruler is basically these shapes here um, so this is like a six sides which is uh, and then it allows you to rotate and so there's your ruler of that perfect shape of course you can increase the number of sides we'll do an octagon right again it, it it'll allow you to uh, spin it so any way you want uh, you can do a circle oh, let me get rid of these you can do a circle it starts from the center and it goes out and then click it one more time to uh, tell it because it was it was trying to spin uh, it's kind of weird because it's a perfect circle you don't need to spin it um, there's this check mark here adjust the angle if you uncheck it it'll just however big you want the circle let go of the pin or off the tablet or your uh, Cintiq and you should you'll get a circle uh, you can also remove that aspect uh, ratio and you can get ellipses if you want and now you can draw ellipses uh, you can add the adjust for the ellipse and that'll give you um, not only can you create the ellipse you can rotate the ellipse click it click the screen one more time and you should you'll have your uh, your ruler you can do squares same thing squares rectangles you can spin it you can click that not spin it or you can if you click the aspect you can get a perfect square see however long the each sides are the same length or you can uh, click this uh, specific length here but you'll need to click that plus sign and you can uh, tell Clip Studio how long I think these are pixels again I'm not sure uh, you can tell it to do a specific length and just click the screen and it'll put it that specific length and let's go back to the default alright the next one is the ruler pin this is very easy just draw whatever you want and that's your ruler and so you can now use your your pin to to create the line however thick you want it maybe you want thick on some sides but not the others kinda buggy so there you go that's the uh, pin ruler it's basically draw it how you want it now the special ruler uh, this is the one that a lot of people use I think uh, basically right now it's set to parallel lines and uh, let's go to default is that the default yep so you just create a line here and you'll see these parallel lines and now anywhere on your screen or on the layer the lines will will be parallel to that whereas before it was just on the ruler I mean you can draw on the ruler too if you want so anywhere on this screen or on this canvas excuse me anywhere on this layer you uh, you will always draw this straight line this way 
and there oh, why did I do that let me just delete it nope. there is also a parallel curve you can do the parallel curve and so now it's anywhere on the layer as you can see though it starts losing the curve here and if you look at this side it starts losing the curve on this side I think what's happening is the way Clip Studio Paint makes these curves here it picks a point here and it well let me turn off the ruler it picks a point here and it picks a point here and then it starts to radiate it radiates out and so the closer you get to this point here the line becomes too sharp to turn so you lose that curve so just be aware of that and that same here as soon as you start drawing a line here it's too sharp so it loses the curve so just be aware of that let me erase this we also have the multiple curve so it kinda looks like a ribbon I think it works best if you stay close to it so now um, let's say you were drawing a ribbon let me turn off the let's say you were drawing a ribbon and now you know for sure that this is the same width all the way around like this this is the same as wide as this as this there because you use that that curved ruler let's delete that one the next one is the radial lines. The radial lines, it's very simple. All you do is click the screen wherever the center is, and it makes these little purple lines. But what it actually is is, in fact, it works better if you go from outside to in. So it's kind of like the speed lines, but you're pretty much drawing them. There's an actual tool that Clip Studio Paint um, does this for you already but if you wanted to do it yourself this is a good way so don't use the perspective tool I know some people use the perspective tool to do this it's much easier with the radial tool that's what it was for and then we have a radial curve this is kinda weird too because where you the first place you click, that's where the, your, uh, the lines will uh, kind of to the vanishing point. That's where all the lines will meet. And then this curve will, will do the curves that um, go to that point. So you can see. I don't know why you would need this, but if you need it, there it is. Okay, delete that. And the next one is the, uh, this is the one that people might be interested in the most. Um, if you've ever wanted to draw um, cylinders or circles or something, you, you do this ellipse and then you can rotate it any way you want. Click the screen again. And so now you can draw like the inside and then the outside of let's say whatever a barrel or something and so you can right in fact you don't even turn if you turn it back on you can go from here why is this not working here uh, it's losing its um, its curvature it shouldn't though except yeah it is Hold on. Let me get a smaller, thinner pen. All right. Yeah, the curvature is not so much there. 
but you can do a line I don't know you can play with it but it, what I would use it for you could even move it around what I would use it for is um, like if I wanted to draw a barrel or uh, something where I needed two circles to be the same as it radiated outwards you have that tool and then you have a guide I don't know why they put this here because oh let me let me erase this real quick because they give it to you in the next one too so you have this guide here and all the guide does is it it just goes 90 degree or 0 degree that and it just it's just a guide um, yeah kinda like a ruler but uh, it goes all the way across it doesn't stop Oops. and I think that's it for the special ruler the next one is the guide there's no settings in the property tools so basically like like the um, in the special ruler it's a guide just like that so I don't know why they give it to you twice now the next the next one is a perspective ruler but I'll go over that when I go over the perspective tools in Clip Studio Paint the symmetry tool it, you can put the symmetry any way you want. It's basically you click and drag the line and it puts a line here. So now anything you draw on this side will also draw on the other side. All right. You can also, um, if you if you click anywhere on the canvas and if you hold the shift button, it locks it into these degrees. And so if you if you just go this way down, it goes all the way. So it's kind of like a mirror. It'll go the whole canvas, not just that particular line. And if you cross over, you can see that it uh it goes, you know, you can draw on this side or you can draw on this side, doesn't matter. It'll it'll mirror. A lot of people use this to uh to draw faces right but um, <laughs> I usually stay away from drawing uh, symmetrical faces it just doesn't look natural to me um, yeah but I mean it's there if you want it usually uh, I will say this that uh, and that's all the rulers um, I will say that when I use rulers I usually draw use rulers to draw mechanical things because mechanical things seem to have very straight rigid edges um, and so that's that's what I use the rulers for anything I, I need to draw organic like plants or, or people I typically don't use rulers now maybe belts or buckles uh, accessories maybe like stuff like that I'll use a ruler but usually when I draw humans or plant life and stuff it's I try to draw it out with a pen just to so it looks more organic but anyways uh, those were the rulers real quick um, I hope you guys learned something from this if you liked it make sure you give it a thumbs up it really helps out uh, with the algorithms uh, lets other people uh, notice the video also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do Clip Studio Paint videos like this. Um, if you got any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section of any of my Clip Studio Paint videos. It doesn't matter. I'll if I see it, if, um, if I can answer it, I'll I'll try to answer it in the comments. But if not, I'll make sure to make a video of it so that other people can see it uh, too. Um, also, um, I plan to do my next video on perspective, on the Clip Studio Paint perspective tools. Um, there's actually um, 
Clip Studio provides two ways. Like I said, there's this perspective uh, ruler here, but then th there's this other uh, tool that um, does it automatically. Well, not automatically, but it sets it up automatically. And what Clip Studio Paint does is it does the one point perspective. And then it also does two point, three point. But the one that Clip Studio does not do is um I don't know if there is a fourth point perspective I doubt it but there is a five point perspective and then there's a false point perspective so um I'll go over that um hopefully that might be a long video this I might make this a video and then make this a video um but we'll see how it goes but anyways uh thank you for watching again uh Click that thumbs, but thumbs up button, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one.